Hello friends, the hero of this review is the long-awaited video card GeForce TTX 1080 on the basis of NVIDIA Pascal. The industry develops fast and TSMC company has successfully implemented the 16nm FinFAT technology. Intel and Samsung got outside of 14nm FinFAT for the production of complex chips, such as central and graphics processors. In short, 216 is the time of the incoming collisions in some segments. In this case, the matter is about the market of video cards. The NVIDIA's point will be carried out by microarchitecture NVIDIA Pascal, and it will compete with 14nm AMD Vega in high-end segment as well as AMD Polaris in middle-end and performance grade. That is, the summary and the autumn promise to be hot and heavy. The introduction to NVIDIA Pascal will start with GeForce TTX 1080, the top grade representative at the moment. Firstly, let's compare the current and the new generation of graphics cards from NVIDIA Comparison. As you can see, they still keep the overall trend to increase productivity and to reduce energy consumption. For example, JTX 1070 is nominally superior to JTX 980 Ti in terms of computing power and its TDP level is low by 100 watts. In its stand, JTX 1080 improved the performance by 78% as compared to its predecessor, and in this case its TDP increased by 9% only. This achievement was promoted due to the improvements in microarchitecture as well as to the number of technologies. Moreover, NVIDIA included some interesting features related to virtual reality and many others. One of these technologies is Async Compute, which was not previously used and was implemented only in DirectX 12. The point is that during a game scene rendering, a computer calculates a variety of complex effects – shadows, lights, object behavior physics, AI operation algorithm and others. As regards DirectX 11, it makes it in a sequential manner, step by step, so a delay at one stage slows down the whole process and they implemented parallel computation in DirectX 12. For example, one part of the system is engaged in a complex calculation of light effects, and the other, meanwhile, processes AI behavior or other stages of image preparation. NVIDIA Ansel technology is likely to be a real breakthrough in terms of capture of the most successful game shots. For its implementation, you will have to add some specific segments to the game program code. It will make about 40 code lines for the Witness and about 150 lines for the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is a mere trifle as compared to the total size. And it provides unique opportunities in return, a free camera which makes possible selecting the required angle to create the maximum imposing screenshots post-processing filters that allow you to play with differing color effects, possibility to capture images with a resolution that is 32 times higher than the maximum display resolution, high-color spectrum support for the subsequent image expert to adopt Photoshop, 360-degree photo shooting for further viewing via VR devices. However, High Dynamic Range HDR is going to become the compelling breakthrough. Monitors with its support can reproduce 75% of the visible light spectrum, which is two times higher than modern screens have. Their maximum brightness increases up to 1000 candelas per square meter, now it is 250-350, and set a contrast ratio up to 10,000 to 1, currently it makes 1000 to 1 for TN and IPS and 3000 to 1 for V. I. Videos and games for HDR offers prospects for the career route and for a real pleasure for the eyes. So, if in the near future you are planning to buy a new monitor, then we recommend you to wait for HDR compatible models, which are to be released till the end of this year. External design of the new product resembles its predecessor, JTX 980 and the aluminium case got more multifaceted form, which promotes aggressive and stylish shape to the overall design. The reverse side includes rigidity plate, which has two functions, it protects the PCB and the installed components and also contributes to additional cooling. 
Under the cooling system there is a printed circuit board with a conventional components layout. The central place is occupied by the graphics processor around which 8 GDR5X memory chips are located. To the right of it there is the 6-phase power subsystem JTX980 U.5 phase design. Power supply to the internal components of JTX1080 is carried out by means of PCI Express 3.0 slot and by one 8-pin PCIe connector. JTX980 had two 6-pin slots. The cooling system slightly hinders connecting the appropriate cable. NVIDIA GeForce JTX1080 Founders Edition is based on 16nm graphics processor NVIDIA JP 104400A1, which includes 2560 CUDA cores, 160 texture units and 64 rasterization units. Its basic operation frequency makes 1607 MHz, while dynamic frequency is determined by diagnostic utilities as 1733 MHz or 1734 MHz. Memory of the new product with a total capacity of 8 GB is assembled by means of 8 GDR5X chips from company Micron. The operation effective frequency makes up to 10,008 MHz and the bandwidth is 320 GB per second. Finally, we shall specially mention the GeForce JTX inscription backlight on the top panel. You can change color and illumination mode. The interface panel includes digital ports only. Maximum resolution is 7680 to 4320 for 60 Hz of scan frequency. The cooling system consists of a low-profile radiator which covers almost the whole front side of the PCB, the evaporation chamber which contacts directly with the GPU, an aluminum radiator and one fan of radial shape. In the rear part you can see another small radiator and the reverse side of the PCB is covered by a rigidity plate, which consists of two halves. The low-profile radiator contacts the memory chips and power subsystem elements through the thermal interface. As for the fan, its diameter is 66 mm. In automatic mode of the cooling system and under maximum load, the GPU temperature reached 82 degrees. The fan rotated at 57% of its maximum speed, generating a light background noise, which was lower of the average level and did not interfere with the operation. Just keep in mind that the critical temperature of the core is 94 degrees. In idle mode, the cooler operated almost silently at 27% of its maximum power and ensured the GPU's cooling up to 34 degrees. During the testing, the cooling system had stable and predictable functioning without any problems. Also, there have been no secondary noises such as high-frequency squeak of chokes. As for the efficiency, then in general the cooler copes well with its functions, but you would like to have lower parameters in automatic mode. Yet, there is only 12 degrees till the critical point. Also, during the cooler testing, we recorded short-term frequency drawdown of the GPU and of the memory immediately after starting the stress test. However, the parameters show fast performance stabilization and you face no problems further. Perhaps it is a software bug that will be fixed in the next driver update. Now, let's get to the most interesting point. Analysis of the testing results of JTX1080 Founders Edition performance in comparison with its competitors. The first striking fact is that the new product becomes a new leader in terms of the performance among the user's cards. We do not consider JTX Titan X because it is much more aimed at professional use in workstations. JTX 1080 Ti version with a very high factory overclocking yielded by 8% on average. The reference options will show even more significant backlog and JTX 1080 option, also with a factory frequency optimization, got behind by an average of 29%. A similar advantage was recorded over AMD Radeon R9 Fury X, although R9 Fury got behind by an average of 35%. And JTX 1080 has almost no rivals in terms of power consumption as well. And the load of Fermark Benchmark, the test system with this video card consumed only 
307 watts, which is even lower than the computer's performance with JTX 1080. In MCI Combustor, these models changed over, although the difference in 10 watts is insignificant in terms of absolute indicators. We carried out the overclocking trials with the help of EVGI Precision X 6.0.0 utility, which supports NVIDIA GPU Boost 3.0 technology. After testing our sample JTX 1080T, the utility displayed the curve of a possible frequency increase for each voltage level. In basic or linear mode, the system automatically selects the optimal algorithm to increase frequency. If you do not believe in its software possibilities, you can set the required parameters in manual mode. During the manual overclocking, we also reckoned upon the automatics in terms of voltage increase on the GPU, which changed it within the range from 862 to 1062 millivolts. As a result, we managed to increase the GPU frequency up to 1999 MHz, an increase of 24.3% relative to the baseline, and the effective video memory speed up to 11694 MHz, an increase of 16.8%. During the overclocking, the fan forcedly operated at its maximum power, keeping the GPU temperature within 73 degrees. The average gain made almost 11%, which promotes the new product to keep the leading positions as compared to its competitors. The partnership cards with enhanced power subsystem and more efficient coolers are much more likely to have higher overclocking records and average performance gain. The medieval France presented to the world the wonderful saying, the king is dead, long live the king, which symbolized the succession of governance. This phrase suits perfectly for our case. JTX 1080 Ti officially resigned as the most efficient single-chip graphics card for the mass market, and JTX 1080 immediately ascended the throne. Perhaps we are to say this phrase several times in the near future because we are awaiting the release of JTX 1080 Ti and competitive options from AMD Vega series, but this is JTX 1080 that still remains at the top. As the real leading model, the graphics card was the first to present a number of innovations on the market. This is the first model which implements GDR5X memory. It was the first to provide support for HDR monitors, NVIDIA Ansel technology and a number of others. And it is JTX 1080 Founders Edition with which NVIDIA came out on the market of graphics card with the reference design of their cards. It used to be developed solely for demonstration purposes, but not for mass sale. Whether this step is successful, given the higher price, the time will tell. But you can claim right now that this model appeared to be a very innovative and smart graphics card, and we can only congratulate NVIDIA company with another successful release. Best regards to you, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.